Hey y'all, I am back with a new what's for dinner video. So first up, I made these chili cheese dog pretzel sliders. These are the perfect weeknight dinner because it's very few ingredients and it was incredibly easy and quick to throw together. And I feel like it's just one of those crowd pleaser meals. Uh, but this is my first time buying those pretzel slider buns. I had never seen them before. We love beef hot dogs. This is my first time grabbing the Oscar Mayer ones. Those were what was on sale. So that's what we got. And and um, I have a can of chili. We love the Hormel No Beans. And also, you'll need some shredded cheese. And no, you don't need a full pound. But if you want it to add that to yours, I promise I will not judge you. So here, I'm just lightly spraying my 9 by 13 bacon dish with some nonstick cooking spray. And I'm adding the bottom portion of those rolls to my dish. Um, I really love that these came pre-cut. If you have ever made sliders using like their regular Hawaiian rolls, you know how big of a pain it is to slice those evenly. I always completely butcher it so that was a nice little time saver and here I just grabbed a good handful of cheese and I'm just evenly spreading that over the top of the rolls so I took each hot dog and I cut them in two thirds and I gave each um, little bun two pieces of the hot dog. The only thing that I would do different in this recipe is I would either grill or like fry these up first in like some oil in a skillet um, versus like just taking them out of the package and adding them on. They were good this way, don't get me wrong, but I just think that char would really take these to like next level and make them even better. Uh, so now that I've got those added, I am just simply stirring my chili in the can. There's no need to heat it up. That's gonna, the magic's gonna happen in the oven. And I'm just taking like a good spoonful and just spooning it onto each like individual slider bun. Can't get any easier than that, right? So lastly, I'm just going to add another handful of cheese on the top. We like ours really plain, but you can add anything that you would add on your normal chili cheese dog underneath that cheese. So if you like onions, do that. Lastly, I had planned on melting down some butter and adding some garlic powder to it and brushing that over the tops, but when the time came, I honestly just didn't feel like it. So I just used some spray butter and I baked these at 375 degrees for about 20 minutes. This was a really fun way to switch up chili cheese dogs. We ended up loving those pretzel sliders, by the way, and we dipped these in mustard and that turned out super good. Um, for the sides, I just air fried the last of my frozen corn on the cob and I also made some homemade potato salad and this was probably the best potato salad I have made yet. I did film like a TikTok format of how I made it, but I haven't got it up yet. It has been an absolute terrible month, which is why I haven't been uploading, but I will be making this potato salad all summer long, so I will definitely show you guys how I made it the next time. Okay, so the next night we had a little date night in steak dinner. We don't do steak all that often, but it's been sounding so good lately. And this is my first time buying filet mignon. And I thought for the price point, it wasn't too bad for this quality of meat. So I was really excited about that. And for the veggie, I'm just doing some Brussels sprouts. It's been a while since I've made those. And baked potatoes are a must when it comes to steak for us anyways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let those steaks rest on the counter for about an hour to come up to room temperature, which is the same amount of time it takes to make these baked potatoes. And I just rub those down in some olive oil and sea salt, and those go in the oven at 400 degrees, rotating halfway through. So now I'm gonna get started on the Brussels sprouts. I have washed those and I am just trimming off the bottoms and slicing those in half lengthwise. Then I'm gonna get those tossed into a mixing bowl and I'm gonna get those drizzled with a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna keep the seasonings super simple. I'm just going in with some kosher salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. So I'm just going to get those all stirred together to get everything distributed well. And I'm going to dump those out onto a cookie sheet. And I have been loving using parchment paper over tinfoil because I never have problems with anything sticking. But I place those alongside the potatoes and I let those roast for about 20 minutes. Next, I'm just adding some olive oil to my cast iron skillet and I'm gonna let that get super hot. So while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I'm gonna go ahead and season those steaks. And just like the veggies, keeping it really simple and I'm just using some good quality salt and pepper. As you can see, I am going pretty heavy handed and I'm doing both sides. I'm also gonna get the sides of the steak. So I'm just gonna roll it around the plate, really pressing it in. And I'm just gonna cook that for a couple of minutes on each side to create a really nice sear. As 
as soon as I got those steaks flipped over, I tossed in a couple tablespoons of butter as well as a few whole cloves of fresh garlic. So I'm just letting that butter get melted down and I'm going to let that garlic infuse into the butter. This step is absolutely necessary. I normally do the butter, but this is my first time throwing in like the whole cloves of garlic and it makes such a difference. I don't think that I could go back to doing it any other way now. The flavor was incredible. So as you can see, I'm just kind of tilting my pan. That way it makes it easier to like spoon that garlic butter over the steaks, but I'm just kind of basting it. And like I said, I did this for a couple of minutes and my oven is still at 400 degrees and I'm actually going to transfer this to the oven. And you know, it kind of depends on your preference, but I ended up doing it for around six minutes. And as you can see, it looks so nice. Um, the flavor was just out of this world. Absolutely loved it. The Brussels sprouts turned out really good. And of course, the baked potato turned out good. Um, just one of our favorite sides. Always have to have the A1 steak sauce. And I'm not going to show myself cooking a steak without cutting into it for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and warn you. I know a lot of you are going to be shaking your head at me. Trust me, I was too. I was super disappointed because I accidentally overcooked it. Um, I used to be the type of girl that ordered a well-done steak, but I'm not like that anymore. I do like it cooked to a medium. Definitely did not achieve that, but luckily it did not turn out tough. It was still really good. So I would say this is a pretty forgiving cut of meat. The next night I am doing a super kid-friendly dinner and I'm sure most of you guys have heard of this. It's a tater tot casserole. I have done a few different versions of this, but this is just a simple one. So I'm gonna start by browning up one pound of ground beef. I'm just using my little meat chop to get it broken apart. I'm going to let that get nice and browned. Um, I normally season my meat as it's cooking, but I bought some 73% lean meat because it was on sale at Kroger and I'm probably not going to buy it again. It's just way too much grease. Um, I'd rather spend a little bit extra on the 80-20 at least, but I did get that drained off and I always like to go in with a paper towel to really um, like get up the rest of it. But I've added that back to my pan and I've also added in a big spoonful of minced garlic. I'm using onion powder and I'm also going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. I let this cook for like maybe a minute just to cook that garlic a little bit. And then I added in several dashes of Worcestershire sauce and most recipes will tell you to use a can of a cream of mushroom soup but since we don't like that I normally swap it for like cream of chicken or cream of celery really any like cream soup will work in this recipe just use what your family likes the best um here I'm adding in about a half a cup of sour cream I just kind of eyeballed it and I'm just getting that meat combined into the creamy mixture and then I'm adding in some frozen corn and I also went with one can of green beans that I just drained um but you know you don't have to use the corn and green beans you can do just one or you can maybe do like frozen mixed veggies or maybe even broccoli just whatever your family likes best like I always say so once I got all of that nice and combined I'm gonna transfer that to my casserole dish this is my 9 by 13 and I have sprayed it with some Pam and I'm just getting that spread out into an an even layer. Now I'm just going to top that with a good layer of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese and now it is time to top it with a tater tot. So I'm just using the great value ones. I've had these in my deep freezer for a bit so I was glad to finally get these used up. It won't take a full bag more than likely. You'll still have some left but I took the time to place it into neat little rows. You definitely don't have to do that. Just make sure they're not overlapped or anything but I cooked that at 350 for about 45 minutes and um, I think next time I would definitely put the cheese on top of the tater tots versus under it. I think that would make it look nicer. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty good. And um, we ended up drizzling ours with some A1 steak sauce. That's what we normally do with tater tot casseroles. My favorite version of this is still like the chicken and cheesy bacon one that's cooked in the crock pot. I've shared it a few times on my channel, but it's still nice to change it up sometimes. Next, I'm going to show y'all how I made soup beans and cornbread. This is one of those meals that we had very often growing up and it's just always going to be one of my childhood favorites. Um, I did soak these pinto beans overnight. You will need a big bowl because these do like double in size. Two pounds of beans is a lot, so keep that in mind. I really should have just used one pound, but it's all good because I was able to freeze a few bags that I can use for other recipes. Um, so I did drain off like the nasty water and I gave them a good rinse. I made sure to really sort through the beans and make sure there was nothing like weird in there. And then 
then I poured it into my biggest pot and then I covered it with some fresh water about one inch above the beans. And sometimes I use like country ham slices or I'll use bacon. Bacon's what I had on hand. So I threw in four slices, brought that up to a bowl, covered it with a lid and I turned the heat down to about medium low. That's what I would call that. And these are going to cook for about three hours. Um, you definitely don't have to cook them for three hours. They could technically be done at two, but I do like them to be like super tender and on the thicker side. So I do like to come in about halfway through to season the beans. And also I want to note that if you don't soak your beans overnight, you will have to come in and add water every now and then, or else they will boil dry and you definitely don't want that. But as for the seasonings, I've added a good amount of some Lari seasoned salt, lots of black pepper. And this was my first time using this better than bouillon roasted garlic base. I bought this at Walmart. I used like a small spoonful amount and Oh my goodness, y'all. This stuff is amazing. I have never even added garlic powder to my beans before. I pretty much stick to like salt and pepper, but something in me told me to do it. And I'm so glad that I did. Like it gave it so much flavor. And this was the best pot of beans that I have made yet. So I'm definitely not going to skip out on that next time I make these. Uh, but yeah, I just let those finish cooking. And then I Gave it a little taste test and it needed a little bit more salt and pepper. So that's why I'm adding some more, but these are done now. I'm just going to scoot those back on the stove and cover them back up with a lid and just let them sit for a while while I prepare the sides. That way it can continue to thicken up. But to me, this is the perfect consistency. Now it is time to make the cornbread. So I'm going to pull out my Crisco and I'm going to measure out around like four ish tablespoons of that and add it to my cast iron skillet. Don't know why I even tried to use a measuring spoon. That was pretty pointless but I'm going to let that melt in the oven as it's preheating to 450 degrees. So now I'm going to get everything else measured out. So I'm going to do about one cup of some yellow cornmeal, followed by about a half a cup of some plain all-purpose flour and one teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to take my whisk and I'm going to quickly get those ingredients mixed together. So now to a measuring cup, I'm measuring out about one and a half cups of buttermilk. I've cracked in one egg and then I'm doing one tablespoon of some baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. So I'm going to get that mixed together really good. And then I'm going to add the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and just mix that together. So now I'm taking that melted Crisco and adding it to my batter, uh, making sure to really keep on moving it around that way. I don't like scramble that egg in there, but now I'm just going to pour that out into my hot and greased cast iron skillet. I'm going to uh, smooth out the top a little bit and pop that in the oven to cook for about 20 minutes. And it should turn out nice and golden brown, just like this. So here is the finished product. Um, as you can see, I did sprinkle the top with some extra black pepper. You can see how thick it is. And I've always just took my cornbread and like crumbled it up in my bowl. That way it can like kind of absorb everything. And to me, that is just perfect. And to go along with it, I've got the Popeye spinach. I always have to get the Popeye because that's what my parents have always made for me. Um, and I also cooked up some fried potatoes. And yes, I am gonna be drizzling it with some ketchup. But I just love the smell of this cooking in my house because it just feels like home to me. And I feel like probably everyone watching has at least one meal that makes them feel that way. Okay, now on to the last dinner for this video. I grabbed a family pack of chicken legs. These are very budget friendly. Normally I would just use half of these, but I was feeding a couple extra people. So I am gonna be doubling the recipe. So now I am gonna make a super delicious marinade. It calls for a half a cup of Worcestershire sauce. I was a little shy, so luckily I had an extra bottle. Definitely don't wanna skimp on that because we love that stuff. And now I'm just adding in four tablespoons of olive oil or you could use avocado oil, just whatever you have on hand. Now I'm gonna be adding in a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, three teaspoons of some garlic powder, as well as three teaspoons of onion powder. I'm also gonna do about a teaspoon of some oregano, and I try to do a teaspoon of some smoked paprika, but I made a little mess, but it's all good. So that's it for the marinade. I'm just going to whisk that together really good, making sure to like pull everything up from the bottom. And I'm gonna be transferring those legs to a large Ziploc bag. I find this to be like the easiest method when marinating mostly anything. And you guessed it, I'm gonna pour that straight into the bag. So. 
gonna take my whisk, get every last drop out, and I'm gonna seal up the bag, and I'm just gonna massage that really well to make sure that all the legs are like evenly seasoned and coated. And I'm gonna pop that in my fridge and let it marinate for several hours. I did come in every hour or two flip the bag over. While those are marinating, I went ahead and got started on my crock pot mac and cheese since it's going to take a while to cook. So I started by measuring out eight ounces of elbow macaroni noodles. And yes, I'm using a food scale for it because I take my mac and cheese very seriously and I want the cheese ratios to be right. So I've added that to my boiling salted water and I'm just following the directions on the back of the package. I have shared this recipe once before in a Thanksgiving side dish video, but maybe you're new, uh, maybe you missed it or or you just need a reminder, but I'm telling you, this is my go-to mac and cheese. It is the best crock pot one that I have found. So as you can see, I have just added my drained pasta to the crock pot. I've added in a couple tablespoons of butter and a little drizzle of olive oil. So now I'm just pouring in one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. And I'm also going to add in one cup of just some regular 2% milk. So you're going to need two cups of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I highly recommend shredding your own for this particular recipe. Yes, I know that this cheese looks crazy. I talked about it in my last What's For Dinner video about my vacuum sealing fail with this. Um, I knew immediately when I messed that cheese up that I wanted to make this recipe because it's going to melt and no one will ever know. I am also going to be using about eight ounces of Velveeta for some creaminess. Um, each of those packs were about four ounces and I didn't even bother to cube them up. I just threw them on in and I just kind of took my spoon and broke it apart a little bit, but I wasn't too worried about it. Now I'm just seasoning it with some salt and pepper and I'm going to quickly stir that together and I'm going to pop my lid on and I'm going to cook that on low for two hours, stirring halfway through. About one hour into that macaroni and cheese cooking, I went ahead and pulled out my chicken legs, got those placed on a cookie sheet, and I'm going to cook those at 375 degrees for 45 minutes. I did take them out of the oven about halfway through to flip them on over. So here is the chicken as soon as it was completely done cooking. And I'm telling y'all, the smell of these will send all of your neighbors running over to your house. Like it smelled amazing. And here is the macaroni and cheese. Once it is done, it got done around the same time as the chicken. And you can just see how like perfectly creamy it is. And so the reason I love this recipe is because even when you reheat it the next day, it stays creamy. And I've never had that happen with like any other mac and cheese. But yeah, so back to the chicken it turned out so incredibly like juicy and flavorful we all ended up loving it i bragged enough on the macaroni and cheese i also served this with some peas that i just seasoned with like some butter salt and pepper and i found these red lobster frozen cheddar bay biscuits at walmart this is my first time buying them and they are super good definitely going to stock up on those when i go back but it was a really good meal and that's going to wrap up this video i really hope that you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one